This is a university mark scheme, and there are five ways that you can change your essay using AI to take you from a 60% average to over 70%. So going from a two one to a first by just changing a few things in five parts of your essay. And in today's video, I'm going to be going through what those are and showing you exactly how to do it. So the first thing you want to improve is your first sentence. This is the absolute first sentence that you see on your sheet of paper for your essay or your dissertation. And this first sentence makes such a difference in how your reader begins to interpret your text. You want to start with a hook, make it compelling and make it so that the reader's interest has been grabbed, but also kind of tease them a little bit with what's to come. You can either provide them with like an interesting quote or thought provoking question and make it so that the introduction, that first sentence tells them the topic area of what you will be speaking about. It shouldn't be ambiguous. It should be exact and to the point. Now, how can you make sure that your essay has been introduced in the strongest way possible? Well, one of the ways that you can do this using AI is by using a platform called Jenny.ai. And Jenny.ai is an AI powered writing tool that is your writing assistant. It uses AI technology to formulate the next best sentence based on what is already written. Now, what it can do is really help you overcome writer's block. If you've started writing and you don't quite know how to begin that first sentence, or even if you've written part of the text, but your first sentence just isn't as sharp as you want it to be, you can get Jenny.ai to actually help you with this. And let me show you how. So as soon as you open a new document in Jenny.ai, you are, are prompted to mention what are you writing about today? And here I've said I'm writing an essay about how nucleators impact the cell cortex motility. And be sure to click on outline builder as this will give you some sort of document headings and a bit of structure for you to work from, which is fantastic. Now, as, we, as I mentioned earlier, we're working on the first sentence. And as you can see, it has already generated the first sentence, but I wanted an alternative. So I've asked for a slightly different one and it's given me this. Now, this is a very general sentence, and as I mentioned earlier, it gives you a ba the background information, the topic, and it's sort of giving the reader an idea of what's to come in this particular essay. And what you can also do is you can also cite these um, sentences as they have been generated from research and from literature. So, of course, it's something that you have to do within an essay and you can do this automatically as well. And of course, you can modify the sentence. So it's just a starting point and it just helps you overcome writer's block, especially if you are kind of not you don't quite know how to improve and you just want to prompt with a sentence and you can expand it further with your own ideas. So now that you've improved your first sentence and you've got that reader's attention, you want to move on to the actual introduction itself. So that bulk of text that the reader first takes a look at has to be strong. It's in so many mark schemes that says, you know, clarity and coherence and structure and critical discussion. These are all aspects that are first kind of noticed um, in the introduction by your examiner. It really sets the tone for the examiner. That first introduction kind of tells them what they might be expected to see for the rest of it. And they can quickly, very quickly actually, you'd be surprised, very quickly make a decision as to what they want to grade this paper based on the introduction alone. So there are three things that you have to include within your introduction. The first is stating your thesis problem or stating the research area that you are about to discuss. So what is it that you are looking at? What are the aims of your essay? And this could just be a sentence or two, but a lot of the times it is really missed out. So just a sentence to explain what this essay is about. The next thing is outlining the structure. Again, this is something that I, I rarely see done, but when done, it, it makes the essay just sound beautiful. So kind of like a brief overview of what your essay is expected to discuss. So just saying something like, first, this essay will touch upon this theory, and then it'll touch upon that theory. And lastly, we'll discuss um, a critical analysis of this area of your, of your research area. Just a few sentences alone, adding that structure within this introduction helps the reader anticipate what's to come and gives them a bit of a teaser um, of what they're about to kind of delve into. And last but definitely not least, you want to ensure that the reader is able to understand why this research and why this essay is timely. So give some context, explain sort of in this day and age why your topic is important. Is there a gap in literature? What is it about this essay that you are discussing that is sort of timely and contextual of today? 
Okay, so moving on to the third part of your essay that we are going to improve. It is the critical discussion. And I don't think I have to say this, but I, I feel like a lot of students just don't know how to be critical. They know they need to be critical and it's on every single mark scheme, but they don't quite know how to interpret that and how to actually apply that into their writing. So you can do this in two very easy ways. One way is by raising a counter argument. So saying something kind of opposite or kind of against what you are discussing. This doesn't mean that it has to be your opinion, but it's an argument that's presented in literature, that's valid and that has been published, but it's different and opposing to what you've been presenting so far. So some of the things that you might think about are implications, like ethical implications of what the researchers that you're looking at and kind of consider what those implications are, or even thinking about something like limitations. So whilst this paper looked at the research in this way, this paper looked at it in this way because they were limited by these factors. And those are some critical discussion points. The other way you can think about it is by presenting multiple arguments and multiple kind of viewpoints. So with this method, you're really thinking about what could an alternate view be? Um, so whilst this one way that I'm discussing in my essay is one point of view, um, this is another point of view. So it's not necessarily about kind of an opposing method or an opposing data result, but it's more thinking about sort of the actual, um, maybe the approach that they use or maybe like their analysis or their conclusion for their research. It could just be a slightly different perspective. Now, Jenny.ai can also help you find a counter argument and discussion points using their platform too. So let me show you that. This feature about Jenny.ai is really cool. So it allows you to find a counter argument or an opposing argument. So essentially, once you've started writing, you've got a point that you've written down by yourself and then you can select it and say, write an opposing argument. And it comes up with this opposing argument that is generated again from literature and you can of course add citations and references to it but it gives you an idea the the, the key here is not to copy and paste the key here is to understand what an opposing argument could look like what a critical discussion point could look like and then to take that and kind of make it your own and think about your own examples from here too um, and like i said you must make sure you're referencing so take a look at some research some literature and then modify it to make it suit your own text Next. Okay, so we've got our juice in, we've added the critical discussion, and now we're moving on to the conclusion. The conclusion is arguably, I would say after the introduction, the conclusion is probably the next most important section that your reader and your examiner is going to take a look at. It is the last thing that they walk away from. After reading your essay, the last thing they take a look at is your conclusion. So it has to be strong and it has to leave them with a really thought provoking summary of your essay and your discussions. Now, there are three things that you must include within the conclusion. The first is to reinstate your thesis, as we mentioned earlier, the point that you are writing your essay about, what your aims and objectives are for the research, say that all over again, as if they don't even know it. Make sure you're providing a sense of closure, so that means using keywords like in summary, um, to conclude, these are words that kind of inform the reader and tell them that they're coming to an end of the discussion. And lastly, connect back to your introduction. If you mentioned a key point or key idea in the introduction, mention it again in the conclusion, just to kind of show that there's a, a nice flow, a nice structure, and that you're telling a really good story that the reader is able to follow from the beginning, the introduction, all the way through and end at the conclusion. And don't introduce anything new or any new ideas in the conclusion either. And actually, Jenny.ai can also help you with your conclusions. And again, let me show you how. Okay, so moving on to the conclusion. You've finished writing a paragraph and you want to get a nice conclusion. You can use Jenny.ai to conclude this paragraph. So it can't be a very large paragraph, but a smallish paragraph you can conclude um, with just a few sentences to kind of summarize it and um, kind of end that section. And as you can see here, this is a conclusion which summarizes everything that I've stated and I can automatically insert it into my text. And again, just make sure you're checking it over, making sure that it makes sense, making sure that it's relevant, it includes the information that you need, it's clear, and of course you can spell check it using Gen Jenny as well. And last but definitely by no means least, the last point is the referencing and your citations. This is so key. I know I've said it's arguably the most important thing, but honestly, all five of these points I mentioned today are so important. So referencing is so key for aiming towards that 70% plus mark. Getting 70, 80, 90%, those are marks that you get because your examiner has deemed your work 
um, sort of publishable, like close to publishable standard uh, with, of course, a bit more work. So for them, referencing has to be 100%. There's no um, kind of leeway or no kind of area or room for mistake when it comes to referencing. The key thing with this is not to reference manually, it's to automate your references as much as possible. In 2023, there's no reason why anybody is writing references out um, from scratch. You should be automating it and making it as easy and as clear as possible for yourself. So with Jenny.ai, you can also generate a library, you can cite, reference, add a kind of citation list at the end as well, and also look for some new papers as you write. So again, let me show you how. So there are a few ways that you can think about referencing in citations when you're using Jenny and when you're writing. So one of them is thinking about journals and actually searching through the journals that um, you may not have seen before in order to find new papers. And when you hover over these little boxes um, where they have the numbers and the ticks, you can see what these references have in terms of their characteristics. So how many other papers are citing them, mentioning them, opposing them and things like that. So that's quite interesting um, when doing a literature search and when thinking about it in a bit more depth. Um, so what you can do is automatically add these uh, references into your text using in-text citations and then you're able to also select from your library so your library you can import it but you can also save your papers as you're reading as well into your library so you have like a good library of, of research that you've already read and you've kind of you know saved as something that you want to refer to so you can automatically add these papers into your text as you're writing along, which is really handy. And I think a lot of other tools that you find may not give you this capability, which is why I really like um, that Jenny does. You can also use websites um, to add as references, which of course diversifies the kind of sources that you're actually using. And that's really helpful. Um, the other thing that you can do is you can actually modify this style of referencing. Um, so you can choose what style of referencing you want to use at the end. So either APA, Harvard, um, and these are different styles which you can automatically change and that will change across your actual essay. So as you can see, Jenny.ai is an amazing platform that gives you the possibilities of really improving your academic writing in a number of different ways that allows you to stay true to yourself when it comes to what you're writing. And it means that you're not only doing research in a more productive way and you're doing your writing in a more productive way, you are able to keep originality and keep your work as ethical as possible. I repeatedly say in these videos when I speak about AI that it's important to use AI in an ethical way, which means not copying and pasting text that is generated rather writing it out yourself and simply enhancing your work or using it to help you with small parts of your essay um, in ways that maybe a tutor would have helped you with for feedback anyway if you want to try jenny.ai um, i'll leave a, a link for it down below and i'll also leave my discount code over here which is jenny20 which gives you an extra 20 percent off of the already discounted annual um, subscription. And as you can see from this video today, it will help you with so many different aspects of writing that it's, it's a worthwhile investment. And if you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to see more from me. And don't forget to leave me a comment and let me know if you've tried Jenny before. And if you haven't, then yeah, try it and come back and let me know how you find it. See you in the next video. Bye.